Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome back to a, another episode of Creepypastas. Yes, Creepypastas. This time we take a look at April 2014, Creepypastas of the Month on the SOG Wiki, just titled Sombrero Wearing Dinosaur. I know what you're expecting, but sit back and enjoy a tale about a Sombrero Wearing Dinosaur. Sombrero Wearing Dinosaur. I'm sure the title raises more eyebrows than interest. Before you begin thinking this is a troll pasta, it's not. It's nothing more than a story. See, Billy woke up in the middle of the night, awakened by one of his usual nightmares, but this time, they were worse. Instead of seeing them die, he was the one who killed them. Cold sweat rolled down his forehead. His eyes were wide open. They felt like he hadn't closed them in hours. The nightmare played on in his head all over again, like someone just pressed the rewind button and played it again from the beginning. Billy's hands felt frozen like pitchforks, shaking, trying to get a grip onto something. His eyes just stared blankly at the blanklets covering his legs. When the nightmare slowly faded in his mind, he raised his head slowly, and right in front of his bed saw a big, yellow T-Rex wearing what seemed to be a pretty big but tight for his size sombrero. He was pretty small for a T-Rex, but it was still big, nonetheless. His head touched the ceiling, and he had his tail wrapped around him on the floor. It was too big for the room. I believe he tried to scream, but suddenly something hit him in the head like a hammer. If the hammer was real, it would have been—it would have blown Billy's head to bits. Heck, the image of his wall, covered in blood, brains, and bits of head was already on his mind. The image stayed for a couple of seconds before his mind focused back on the dinosaur. A dinosaur Billy could swear he had met before. The dinosaur leaned forward. Billy could feel the dinosaur's warm breath on his face. Billy could now make out more details from the uh, sombrero. It was made with light brown felt. It had a crimson and white floral pattern on the sides and on the top, with shiny gold-colored glitter on the white spots. The dinosaur stared at Billy for almost a full minute. Billy was surprised to find that he was not, the only, he was not only afraid of the dinosaur, but he felt kind of safe around him. The dinosaur opened his mouth and spoke oddly enough. His mouth was not moving as he talked. It was like someone was inside the dinosaur and was talking from inside. You okay, Danny? asked the dinosaur with a deep voice, which oddly enough sounded more human than anything else. Danny nodded slowly as he dragged his knees up to his chest and then wrapped his arms around him. I am the dinosaur hoping he was here to help. The dinosaur raised his head and then slowly looked at the digital clock setting, uh, sitting on Danny's nightstand. The clock shined the number 625 on its screen. The dinosaur turned its head to Danny and spoke again. Nightmares again? You should go back to sleep, Teddy. Teddy shook his head quickly as he unfolded his legs slowly and said, I'm afraid of the nightmares. He said in what sounded more like a whisper. The dinosaur looked around the room. His tail slammed against one of the nightstand's legs, knocking it over. But neither the boy or the dinosaur cared. Not even his who were parents sleeping next door noticed the sound. What's your name? Teddy asked the dinosaur, looked at the toy sitting on Teddy's shelf. The dinosaur stared blankly at a teddy bear on the shelf as he spoke. Don't you remember my name? We used to be good friends, Steve. Steve blinked, not remembering being friends with any dinosaur, but that might explain why he felt that way with Jerry. Yes, Jerry. He remembered now. It's Jerry, right? Steve asked as he crawled on the other end of the bed slowly. The dinosaur looked over and nodded with a smile on his reptilian lips. He then turned around holding a teddy bear with his name Joshua on it. This one's yours, right? Jerry handed it over to Joshua, who hopped off the bed, almost tripping over the dinosaur's tail. Once Joshua got back on his feet, he nodded and took it, squeezing it a hug. Can we play a game? Joshua smiled softly at him. The dinosaur returned the smile and nodded. They both sat on the ground and played with Joshua's toys. Joshua played as a teddy bear, and Jerry played as a man in the jacket with the knife in the right pocket. They both made jokes and laughed as they played. Then they played checkers. Joshua was the black ones, and Jerry, the red ones. Then they played rubber, robbers and cops. Joshua was a cop, and Jerry was a robber. Then they played firefighters. Joshua was a firefighter, and Jerry was the knife. Then they played superhero. Joshua was a superhero, and Jerry, the multiple stab wounds. Then they played knights and dragons. Joshua was the gun, and Jerry, the bullet piercing the skull. They played checkers. Susan was a dead body. Jerry was the father. Finally, they played hide-and-seek in Susan's bedroom. Susan was the sin. Jerry was the broken glass. They kept playing until it was time for Susan to get ready for school. 
hears the door of her parents' bedroom open and the steps of someone walking towards her bedroom. Susan panicked. The room was a mess. Toys were all over the floor and there was the dinosaur. She quickly turned to the dinosaur and he was gone. Billy's mother opened the door and frowned at the sight of all the toys lying on the floor. After a good scolding and some breakfast, Billy was ready for school. Billy stood in front of the entrance door waiting for his mother to bring his favorite Donald Duck winter hat from his room. She quickly ran down the stairs with the hat in hand. She gave it to Billy as, he o as she opened the door. The bus was about to arrive at any moment. Outside, the front lawn looked completely white due to all the snow covering it, except for a spot with yellow snow his father was trying to cover with more snow. That asshole of Lucas took a pissed drunk on our lawn this morning again, the father said to his wife between growls of anger and tiredness. Billy was about to walk out when his mother got in the way. She dropped on her knees and gave Billy a little kiss on the cheek. I'm sorry I scolded you, honey, but you can't mess your room like that. She stared into his eyes. I hope I was not too harsh on you. Was it one of your nightmares again? She said, concerned. Billy shook his head. What a lying prick. Meanwhile, the father had the idea of following the asshole of Lucas. Next time he took a piss and slammed his head with a shovel over and over until his brain scattered all over the white snow. Like painting on a black canvas. Then take a smoke while sitting on his dead body. The image flashed through his head. A little smile showed in his face, but again, it was just an idea. Billy got on the bus and the day unfolded like any other day. The bus drove down the lane, the sky had not a single cloud and the sun shined so much that the snow was able to blind someone. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. He stopped off the bus carefully not to miss a step and fall, then made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. His mother opened the door and smiled down to Billy who proceeded to walk in. Rewind. The bus drove down the lane. The sky had a bunch of clouds and the sun shined so much that the snow was able to blind someone. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus carefully not to miss a step or fall on his face, then made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. His mother opened the door and stared down at Billy who proceeded to walk in. Rewind. The bus drove down the lane and sky, you know, had plenty of clouds, but the sun shined so much that the snow was able to blind someone. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus, carefully not to miss a step, and fall on his face and bleed on the clean sidewalk, then made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. His mother opened the door and frowned down at Billy, who proceeded to walk in. Rewind. The bus drove down the lane. The sky was cloudy. There was no sight of the sun. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus carefully, not to miss a step, and fall on his face, break his little skull and soil the clean sidewalk with his brains. Then made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and ring the doorbell. No response. Ringed again. No response. He then realized the door was open. Two cops were inside, looking down at two dead bodies on the kitchen floor. Jimmy stared at the two dead bodies. He could not see their face, and he did not want to in case those were his. Excuse me, are you Jimmy? One of the cops asked who noticed Steve by the door. Steve nodded very slowly. The cop sighed and said, We're sorry about what happened. We'll try to find out who did it, okay? The cop stared into Joshua's eyes, trying to com comfort him with an arm around his shoulder. The other cop was scratching his head while inspecting the bodies. It's like a dinosaur did it. It does not get any better than this. Rewind. It does not get better, any better than this. This sucks. I need a drink. Well, I really have no idea what to say about April 2014's Creepypasta of the Month, Sombrero Wearing Dinosaur. This was definitely something I really didn't expect, and I don't know whether to like this or not. At first, it's really confusing and very hard to follow because of the different names and whatnot, constantly changing throughout the whole story, but at the same time, the little details peppered in and the adjustments to the story and emotional mindfucking were so wonderfully done, you question its reality and wonder whether it's true or what isn't. You know, uh, kind of like the Revolution Creepypasta we did uh, a while back, more intense in its execution. It's really something when you look at it, I wasn't expecting it from a, you know, tale titled some rare wearing dinosaur at all. I thought this was, again, just going to be a troll pasta, but it wasn't. Now, although I liked the concept and the rewinding felt like a strange security tape and the execution was rather unique, I don't think I really like it because of its difficulty to follow with different names and whatnot. I feel like as though it was, it was paced properly, but if uh, it left me saying what the fuck just happened, 
And if a tale makes me feel that way and still doesn't have a proper, you know, ending, the plot ending, and it leaves me confused there as well, I can't really give it a glaring recommendation. I mean, the ending with the rewinds was a really sweet touch. Uh, Hot by Miami, I guess, if you will. And I guess it hit because of the obscurity of those rewinds of the father and then the child coming on to what I assume is abuse and beatings and that whole police trauma in the end. In the end, I really think it's an interesting creepypasta, and you should check it out, but, you know, it's about a sombrero wearing dinosaur around hell. Wouldn't you check it out? I mean... Tonight, it's an eye catcher. That's for that's for damn sure. And ask what would you rate it, and what would you change to make it better? I can't really give it a recommendation, obviously, because it, it is very obscure to follow. But then again, it is unique to see a creep pasta do something else other than what is the norm. This has been another episode of Creep Pasta, and also again, April twenty fourteen Creep Pasta of the month on the Sock Wiki. If you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.